Valhalla, a world where resources are plentiful and treasures abound. High mountains meet vast plains and realms of treacherous beauty and calm. A place the inhabitants of this great land know well and true the riches that Valhalla has to offer. Do not be so quick to deal death upon whom you may deem to be your enemy. For Valhalla is first and foremost a place where those who seek to find their destiny within this bountiful land just may get the chance. All right, so... Uh... We are here to uh, provide you guys with the monthly update uh, for the month of December. Um, so for this project, being the metaverse game for the Valus network, we also want to build a uh, unique and well-rounded uh, IP in the GameFi space. Um, so um, in addition to the metaverse game, uh, we want to establish an ecosystem around it to support uh, its uh, future operation. So one of the effort is the comment series. Um, the comment series is something that we are working on as part of the ecosystem. Um, and we finished working on the comic series and we are releasing the comic series NFTs very soon, um, which I will discuss this uh, in details later in the meeting. Um, and we are also working on the uh, uh, new exchange uh, listing and things are coming along the way and we will give you guys updates very soon. Um, okay, so to move on, uh, here's the agenda for, for today. So in our last meeting, uh, we told you guys for the month of December, we are going to focus on uh, the planet creation, which is our metaverse architecture. And concurrently, we're gonna execute our production um, as well as getting ourselves ready for the land pre-sale. We are also gonna lay out the design for the building economy, which we will talk about. And finally, for the walk on in the next couple of weeks, which is in January, okay? So um, let's start from the planning creation, the first action item. So um, we, we are very well aware of the recent competition in the game five space, right? And we take these competition very seriously. Um, we don't think these competition as a threat to our project. As mentioned, you know, in our previous meeting, we want to build a um, distinctive, right, metaverse architecture that uh, that would differentiate ourselves from the peers. So the, our solution to that is the planetary system. So uh, for the month of December, uh, we create this planet. Um, it's very, it's getting ready, cl very close to uh, completion. In our previous meeting, we talked about there's different continent um, and then there's different land type. So it actually, you know, coming along pretty well um, and we overcome a lot of technical difficulties, um, but this is very close to the final uh, version of the planet. Uh, we're still working on some of the arts uh, on the background and also uh, some cosmic ray um, and some, some um, particle system we're still putting together for uh, uh, some of the art effort, but it's, uh, it's getting really close to completion. Um, and here are some of the details that um, you should be able to see um, on the planet. So when you zoom in, you could actually see, I guess, a, a, finer, a finer, you know, granularity in terms of the details. Uh, for the planet. And as you can see, there are different type of land landscape. Um, so throughout the course of our development, um, you know, we have to overcome many engineering difficulties. Um, so, you know, the effort, not just on the, you know, rendering on the client side, the graphics, uh, but as well as some of the calculation that we have to implement for optimizing the performance uh, when we want to, especially when we want to load this on the web browser, as well as we want to build this into a native app, right? It needs to be cross-platform. Uh, so 
we need to keep the lower end device in mind, uh, making sure that performance is is able to uh, is able to serve these lower lower end devices. Um, so the things that we did is uh, we created a um, a way of uh, rendering this planet only when the camera is focusing on uh, where the visible or the vi viewable area. So as you can see in this video, um, you know, the rest of the planet is not being um, calculated, but only the places where um, the camera is focusing on is actually doing the calculation. So this will give us a, um, uh, a boost in terms of the uh, performance optimization. And this will be able to run on the browser and we're still doing a little bit of optimization right now. Um, but again, you know, we're, we're getting really close to finish uh, this planet. We're very excited. Um, um, so that's uh, the planet creation. And moving on to the next topic, which is the art production. And our production is, is, is equally important, if not uh, more important than the engineering effort, uh, because we, we know, you know, establishing an IP requires a lot of uh, uh, effort, not just on the engineering side, but on the artistic side. Um, so, um, uh, Jeffrey, could you uh, talk about the characters that, um, that we worked on? Sure. So, so far right now we have the four races, which are the warriors, uh, the Valonians, the mutants, and the cyborgs. And starting from the first slide, we have the warriors. And as you can see, the warriors are uh, a mixture between Viking and we've shown their traits through um, metallic armor, metallic enhancements, cybernetic enhancement under the body. So you have your, your woman characters with um, like metallic arms, armor attached. And we kept with the, the leather pants and tight tights um, resembling the, you know, the traditional Viking leather garments. And this, we were trying to keep it a, a more, um, less cartoony, but more comic style with a cross hatching the character's face, body, you try to give it a harsher tone and colors. So this is what we have for the, um, the warriors. And onto the next slide, we have the mutants which are a bit of an anamorphic race with different characters. We have um, a lamb, like a lamb creature, like a beast or gorilla-like characters. And on the right, we have the character Boar. And the, we'll show you on a later slide, depending on the MT, there might be different colors to Boar variations. These are obvious, obviously more of like an um, anamorphic character with, well, just gonna be more races. They're like animal features. And then we have uh, our third and fourth races, the Valonians and the mutants. Valonians are more elf-like creatures, and we do where where it may have um, it's our game version of Valonians. It's different from the comics. Um, this is more like a more like a fairy type, fairy esque kind of character, and the whole race is and the cyborgs. They're more like I guess think of Thanos. They have the whole. Thanos like appearance, kind of like a purple skin with like um, bio enhancements and metallic enhancements all over the body. And um, and that's our character so far. And let's move on to the landscapes, I guess. Right. So landscapes, landscapes um, well, we've been working on a lot of um, art art materials, art doodads, uh, environmental like uh, different um, materials for different uh, um, environments. And this is the lava scenes. We have the wastelands, the deserts. So um, we've been making pillars, like different um, props for every different environment. So it kind of differentiates it out. And on the next slide, we have a list of um, materials we've been working on and how far we got to it. So basically we've pretty much completed the 2D concept art for all five different terrains. And we have the 2D cards, the 3D landscape, island tundra props but they're, they're very close to done, being very close to finished. And obviously after everything is completed and created, we, ha we need time to polish it. So, you know, there's still need time to be polished, polish, you know, polishing. And as for DMZ land type, we have the concept already out and we're still working on a 2D art and 3D landscape is mostly made. 
<coughs> just going to be waiting for uh, Frostland. It's almost done, and we're currently working on it. And we're, we're, we're still working on the 3D props. There's obviously more polishing to do after we finish it. And mm -hmm. here are the loot boxes for the lands. So uh, when you purchase a land, because we have four different types of land, we have the grassland, the tundra, uh, the molten barrens, and the wastelands. So depending on whichever land you purchase, you get different loot box and they have the animation. And here is our uh, 3D models where um, the loot box was to open up, have it designed, and this is what it's going to look like. And the product is not final, but this is pretty close to being, being done. Great. Thank you, Jeffrey. Um, so, uh, so, so, so what we presented here are the art assets, which, which we feel are, um, you know, like, you know, more than 95% completed. Right, so we may add tweaks, uh, small changes and fixes here and there, but they're, they're, they're almost done. Um, so I wanna move on and talk about the then pre-sale, uh, which is coming up uh, uh, first quarter of next year. We hope to deliver this feature in um, February. So um, there's a lot of work that requires for, uh, for establish uh, this pre-sale effort. So uh, the first thing that, you know, comes to our um, um, effort is the, um, obviously the purchasing interface, which we need to implement. So um, as we talked about in our previous meeting, um, we're going to tie to the Twitter and account. And uh, here is the user experience or UX, a very small, um, I guess, animation that represent uh, what we will implement for the interface, the UI. Um, now on the left-hand side, that round circle item is the planet, right? So when you make purchase of the loot box, you get to see the animation on, on uh, showcasing on which, uh, which land that you will get. And um, then there will be a pin on the, the planet to indicate uh, where the land is at. Okay, um, and we are actually working on putting together the UI already. Uh, so this is just the UX that we worked on to, um, to prove the concept. All right, so I just wanna do a very quick recap on the geography type. So Jeffrey, could you, could you please explain this? Okay, so um, I know so far you see six different lands, but here is how it works. We have four lands for sale, the grassland, the molten barrens, the tundra, and the wasteland. And the rarity comes from obviously grassland being the highest and most amount of uh, resource that one can purchase. And molten and tundra and wasteland goes in that order. But in every loot box, and obviously uh, the better land that you purchase, the higher chance you have to getting a crystal highland. And crystal highland is like the best land you can um, acquire and only um, by lottery draw, they can get this really rare land. And you know, the better loot box you purchase, the higher chance you have getting this land. And it gives the most amount of resource. So you may wonder what the holy lands are. Well, the holy lands are for special events that's um, like in-game events that's gonna occur. So they're, they're a game event happens after a uh, game is released. So right now, the only lands we focus on are the grassland, multi barrens, tundra, and the wastelands. And we're, we're trying to get players to um, draw as much as they can so they can get the Crystal Highland. And it's for trading. And we're going to explain to different land types and the perks of different land types in the next slide. Okay. So uh, for the drop rate, the percentage uh, number that you see here, they're, they're temporary here. Um, so they're not finalized. Uh, we will definitely let you guys know what is, what is the drop rate for each uh, loot box. But that that will come in the uh, in the next couple of weeks. So please go ahead and explain the card, then card. Okay. So as you seen, we made a whole plan and structure with different uh, lands inside, and there's a total of a hundred sixty thousand pieces of land, I believe, if my math is correct. And within it, um, here are the units. Um, in this each picture, you have. Let's go from the bottom left first. You have the little icon. Um, that icon, the purple icon is Crystal Highlands. And then we have the Molten, the Fire icon. 
the ice icon for tundra and the barren icon for wasteland and a grassy green icon for the red grasslands and to the right of the icon you you may wonder what is that little um tree mark well uh the bigger the tree the more leaves you have on the tree it means the more fertile the land is so you want to have land with more resources. They're more valuable. So Crystal Highlands is obviously the best land you can possibly obtain in this game. And the, the wastelands are very minimal. And the stars, the stars are interesting. Um, you can upgrade your land to increase the star level. And the more stars you have, the more people you can have harvesting from that piece of land. So the purpose of stars is it um, enables the maximum production of each piece of land, Co coordinates. So um, for example, here you see the Crystal Highland. These are just numbers we've made up. It's not um, for the actual game, but so you have four, uh, 41 longitude and uh, two latitude. So with that number, you can go back to the planet and see exactly which piece of land it is on the planet that we displayed earlier. So it makes one player purchase the land they can see the number and they immediately know, oh, where's this at? And where's the next land we want to trade in? And, you know, works will combine your land in a little bit later. Right. Yeah. So the total number of land for sale is, is right. So it's uh, 160,000 pieces of land. Um, so, yeah. So with that, uh, let's move on and talk about the building economy. Um, 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 the As we talk about, in in our previous meeting, um, we are flushing out all the design uh, as we progress uh, as we move forward, right? So uh, the building economy is something that uh, very important for uh, uh, producing the resources in your on your land. So connecting lands, that's a very interesting aspect because we want to encourage players to trade land as much as possible. And by, you see in the video, every piece of land is surrounded uh, on all four sides by mountainous terrain. So by connecting the two lands you have, which means owning two pieces of land that's next to each other, what essentially happened is the mountain range between the two lands is removed and you gain more building areas. So with each um, connected land you connect, you remove one single mountain range. But imagine if you have a square, um, four pieces of land, then you remove four borders all at once. So you kind of have players strategize. Do they want an LP shape of land? Do you want land that um, gets around other resources? Or do they just want to expand the largest uh, surface area? It, it creates a lot of um, strategic planning and strategy on how to get the best land or the best resources and what shape to make your land into and who's to trade what land and probably make some lands more valuable because you need one piece of land to make like the shape that you need for whatever goals that you have. So there's a lot of strategies involved and there's also a lot of type of buildings involved, which uh, on the next slide. Right, so uh, there is a lot of design and thoughts put onto the types of building and their economy. Um, so um, we don't wanna explain this in too much details, but just to give you guys an overview of what are the types of building and what it are? Jeffrey, please go ahead. Okay, so uh, basically we have two types of buildings or actually many types, but two bigger categories, which are buildable on home base and buildable on planets. The home base is with the floating island that every player starts with. So basically any building you can build on a home base is core game mechanic features, such as barracks, building units, vaults, warehouse storage, or upgrade centers that you need to improve your units or game capabilities. And ending building on a planet is more like bonuses, like extra bonus resources that encourage the player to purchase more land. So just having the home base, uh, all the game features will be functional and you'll be, play, be able to play the game, but you want to build more on a planet because it gives you more perks advantage over other players. And on the next slide, we have our resource buildings. Now here's the key. The resource buildings are what makes or breaks the game. Basically, every player wants to have two different types of resource, the um, wood and 
minerals. And there are different types of wood and mineral, like, you know, cherry wood, different type of wood, uh, gold, silver, iron. And there's a whole system about how, how uh, mining and lumber works. So we'll be explaining that in a future slide, but um, let's move on. Um, right, so type of buildings, these are more aesthetically, um, for aesthetic points, these are not um, game core feature, game mechanic features. These are uh, aesthetic buildings, which is like trees, row, lampposts, optical, and decorations that makes them more city-like. City -like. And you might think, well, if I just want to get a better, uh, more resourceful city and which one like make my city uh, more productive, make more money, then why do I care about this stuff? Well, it actually gives you construction points, which um, is another mechanic that improves um, how your city can be built later. And it gives other gameplay perks that we're going to talk about in the future months to come. So um, it is actually nice to think of aesthetic city because that's going to be a lot, um, a lot of extra bonus perks to your game. And mm -hmm. we have, um, we're going to talk about how um, the mining about, works, which is on next yeah, slide. Mining and yeah. harvesting information. Right, mining and harvesting information. So first, first thing to um, in order to prevent players from creating multiple accounts and mining everywhere and uh, hoarding resources and breaking the game, we actually require tools like a mining pick to mine like uh, gold or silver, or iron. So you need to get um, tools. But how do you get tools? In order to limit tools, you have to play the game and win or um, acquire ranking and ranking matches. So it prevents having multiple accounts because only one account can play the game. You have to actually play the game to get the resources to mine. So, you know, units are actually harvesting, can join battles and defend. So you don't have to worry about like, you have a combat team that cannot go mining. You can send them deployed to mining. They're separate. It just, it's our way to prevent um, players from abusing the system. And we're gonna show you how People owning land can gain resources just from owning land in the next slide. Okay, so there's three types of people that can um, gain resources in, in this system. Um, first, we have person who owns the land, the landowners. Um, the landowners, they have resources on their land and other players have to come harvest it. And the landowners automatically gets resources by just owning the land, it gets like a, if I remember correctly, this is, um, the numbers can be changed in the future. This is not set in stone, but I think the landowner gets 15% of uh, the resources that's harvest. And by having these resource owning the land, you need to have um, mining, mining um, like mines or like lumber mills or other resource harvesting centers. Um, the person who builds these centers also gets 15% of the resources. And then the other 70% goes to the person who sends a team to harvest it. So every time a harvest is done, three different players get um, resources. The landowner, the person who invests building the buildings, and the harvesters. And in order to make land active, so you don't own a piece of land and don't do any with, anything with it. If a player, they have the option to release the land, to, um, loan it out to harvest resource, or if the player has not been logged in for extended amount of time, the land is automatically open for leasing uh, that you can, that people can just harvest on your land. And you might think, what if this landowner just um, cancels like land leasing? What if you built, you spent all this resource building a warehouse or a lumber mill and onto this piece of land and you want to harvest it and suddenly the person like turn off the land, what's going to happen to your buildings? Well, what happens is your buildings gets collected back, back to, um, the builder and it goes through to a, like a virtual inventory and in this inventory it's limitless so you can have as, as many inventory as you want and what happens it come like an item that you can use and just set it on a different piece of land so you don't lose all the resources you use to build the, um, the structures the structures goes back into your virtual inventory that can place on a new piece of land so nothing is lost Okay, great. So yeah, so uh, we, we recognize that there, there are many different types of player, right? So they're landowner, harvester, and building owner. 
Uh, so everyone has their different specialties. You may be good at building the, the building. Uh, you may have the better units for harvesting. And, you know, I might own a good piece of land, right? So, and our time span on the game, obviously the more the, the better, but, you know, sometimes I, I may not be available to be online, right? So we want to make sure that it, it benefits all the stakeholders, all the players who plays the game. So that's, that's the ultimate goal. Now, so yeah, so that's pretty much uh, uh, what we have uh, worked on for the month of December. Uh, a lot of work, a lot of effort has been put in. Uh, with that, I wanna move on and talk about the final topic, which is the next step. So what are we gonna do for the month of January? Well, um, so the first thing, first and foremost is the staking. Um, so the out of game staking feature, uh, we're gonna put on the website um, and it's getting really close to completion. Uh, we are testing the smart contracts as well as the, um, the scalability uh, and we are making sure the security is, is solid. Um, so um, we are thinking um, early uh, January, we will release uh, this uh, this feature uh, for for you to stake. So whoever owns SCAR, you could stake SCAR to earn dividends. Okay, and more will, more will be announced uh, in the next couple, next couple of days. But yeah, so that's our goal to get staking feature out. Um, next up is the comic series. So we we have been talking about the comic series. Uh, a lot, I guess, in, in, in our Telegram channel. Um, but the idea is this. Uh, again, you know, in order to establish, establish a uh, ecosystem, uh, a complete intellectual property, right? So we would need different elements surround the game to support it, right? So we recognize the importance of uh, that NFTs and different assets uh, in game and out of the, out of the game. So we came up with this idea that you know we, when we re release the comic series, uh, whoever purchased the comic series, uh, you get uh, there's different rules that we're going to implement. So you get to redeem uh, the gold and silver cards uh, uh, that represent some of the characters, which eventually will be in the game, right? And not only that, uh, you could also redeem. Uh, the skin, which it will make your character different uh, from, from um, the rest of the, the players. Um, and then there, there are more things that we will design into the NFTs and, and, and also making sure that the, the NFTs and the game design are intertwined. Uh, they're very uh, interconnected. Uh, we will try to make this uh, experience very, very uh, exciting and, and interesting. All right, so that's the collectibles, the NFTs. Um, and the next uh, is obviously the planet creation. And again, you know, as I discussed this earlier, we're, we're getting really close to putting this all whole thing together. I mean, we have uh, engineers and, and designer, you know, they, they work around the clock, working around the clock to put this together. So we're very, we're very excited and we're, we are getting really close to testing the entire thing, but yeah, please stay tuned. Uh, we will announce more features uh, in the channel um, and making sure that everything is uh, designed properly um, and implemented properly. Um, and, and to move on, obviously, on the, the most important part of the game is the art and, you know, everything is, you know, in parallel. So we have the guys, you know, flushing out the landscape and, you know, we have people working on the character design and implementation. So, yeah, so, so some of the, uh, I would say not, not, you know, as completed landscape or, 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 uh, our pieces are here, so you can see there, uh, there are different lands that landscape that we're still working on, we're still putting together, uh, and we are still uh, adding finishing touch touches to uh, to the landscape. 
uh, obviously VFX is something that also very important, right? So we need to add that in while making sure the performance is is it's uh it's reasonable on on the on the devices um and and also the characters right so we want we want to continue and make making the the characters um and the 3d models for for the character obviously okay all right so with that that wraps up uh, with you know what we want to update uh, for the month of uh, december 